Welcome to Bharata First. You're watching Frank Talk with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Since you're here, please like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and share the video as well so that more people can get to know about us. You can also subscribe to our newsletter to get some insights and information. If you like our content, please contribute to keep it alive. A small contribution that you make will be a giant leap for us to keep bringing you this content. Let me also inform you about Bharata First Knowledge Center, your one stop destination for all your competitive exams needs. I will be starting live big picture current affairs classes after Diwali, so don't miss the chance to interact with me. We also have massive discounts for our existing packages. The offer ends in a few days. Don't miss out on this incredible new learning experience. Go to kc.bharatafirst.com and register right now. Hundreds are reaping the benefits of the Knowledge Center. Don't be left behind. All this information, along with some must see recommendations, are in the description of this video. Please go through it. Well, now on to our interaction. Rather than taking up all contentious border related issues all at once, India has decided to take them step by step, resolving one issue at a time with China before bilateral normalcy is restored between the two Indo Pacific powers. Just as the Indian Army People's Liberation Army standoff on Gogra in East Ladakh was resolved in the 12th Corps Commander meeting on July 31st. India intends to take up all the remaining issues one by one with China while not allowing the PLA uh, to unilaterally change the status quo along the 3,488 kilometer line of actual control. Next on the table are resolving standoff at uh, the hot springs near uh, Konkala. Uh, Demchok and restoration of patrolling rights in the Depsang Bulge. In this edition of Frank Talk, we will analyze the border situation between India and China. To do that and to talk about it, I have with me on the program Major General Ashwini Sivaj, retired defense and strategic expert. General, welcome to Frank Talk and let's Thanks. analyze this entire India China border issue. You know, uh, the border issue, of course, is a long standing one and it goes on for, you know, with, uh, many, many decades. But we won't go into the history of it. We won't go back into the Britishers' time. But we'll talk about the latest border issue that we saw, especially in Galwan and uh, in the entire Ladakh sector. Uh, it's been about a year and a half now since the incident took place where uh, the Indian armed forces and the Chinese armed forces got into a skirmish and got into some kind of uh, physical contact that wasn't seen before. Uh, so what what is the main issue, General, as far as the entire border is concerned between India and China? Uh, yeah, Frank, as far as the border is concerned, uh, especially in Eastern Ladakh, as we are aware that a complete border between China and India is 3,488 3, kilometers. And it is basically uh, divided into uh, three sectors. One is the eastern sector, which is Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim. And then is the central sector, which is basically Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh. And third is the western sector, which is basically eastern Ladakh. Now, these are the three sectors where, uh, you know, we, which we have uh, this boundary of complete uh, 3,488 kilometers. As far as the eastern sector is concerned, uh, the border dispute is basically, you know, it is following a MacMahon line, which is the watershed principle. Of course, uh, it's not been recognized by China because they are not the signatory in 1914 uh, similar agreement. However, we always say it's a well-defined boundary, which is uh, basically formed on a principle of uh, watershed. Second one is the central sector and where Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand is there. This is the uh, you know sector where the maps were also exchanged between each other. Though the Chinese uh, wanted to get those maps back again, but the central sector was by and large was uh, settled. As far as the western sector, which is eastern Ladakh, is concerned, there have been uh, always a uh, dispute. There are areas of differing perception between India and China. 
we feel that they have uh, taken almost about 38000 km of axial chain and also uh, 5800 plus km has been uh, gifted by the pakistani of pakistani occupied uh, kashmir which were illegally taken from the saksham gaon valley so therefore uh, we feel that as far as chinese are concerned they are sitting on excitation and also occupying our saksham valley now oh, as far as the border was concerned uh, you know by and large it was peaceful and everyone thought that the uh, war between india and china cannot take place since the trade is so huge between both these country economic uh, relations are intermingled this is about 100 and billion dollar and hence the china was very fast in uh, sort of uh, improving its infrastructure and capacity building india wasn't that fast india was slightly slow because it needs money it also had many other problem but after what has happened in doklam and also before that once this government came they realized ki if we don't have a good connectivity on line of fracture control we will always suffer so our connectivity issue has increased especially in last about say about 7 to 8 years and this has rattled uh, china and especially in eastern ladakh where we uh, started making a uh, roads tracks going up to line of fracture control and so is central sector and also east sector and mainly in ladakh now we made a strategically a very important road called darbuk shok dolat bag old road and that uh, was a, a tripping point and not only that road which connects the dolat bag old which is called sub sector north where in we have a four size of more than a, a brigade plus and there uh, there is a ARG Dolat Bag Oldi, which we upgraded also, and therefore the Chinese thought that we are doing or trying to do something in Aksaiche, and not only that, this road we made also number of uh, tributaries road going to a line of actual control and connecting with these patrol points, which which are basically starting from one to twenty. Now, having said so, the Chinese did what they did. in uh, basically in eastern ladakh almost about year and a half when they were conducting the exercise in xinjiang province from there they directly came in eastern ladakh and occupied certain areas of ours frank right you know uh, so since we're talking about this a few things that i want to take forward with you general the first point being since you've been there you served our nation in this particular region i want to understand from you what is the terrain like and now we have some reports that have come in that you know uh, uh, as the winter is going to get far worse the the forces are going to get into a very difficult kind of a situation because we know that china is not going to back down so what is the terrain like that we are dealing with yeah uh, absolutely so frank first of all let's see what is uh, the problem in uh, eastern ladakh no as far as the chinese are concerned we feel the chinese have come slightly inside uh, basically uh, we feel that they must go back to whatever was the status quo which was april 2020 and hence when the talks started taking place a comprehensive package was by and large uh, uh, been understood or been uh, uh, sort of uh, agreed by both the countries in one of the meeting which says that in phase 1 phase 2 and phase 3 this will be the uh, disengagement and disescalation take place in phase 1 it will be north and south of pangangso in phase 2 it will be gogra and hot spring and in phase 3 it will be tapsan now what has happened is as you are aware that on night of 29 30th august 2020 what we did is we had a master stroke that we occupied the class ray the class range uh, is dominating chashur maldo baul it also consist of uh, rajangla rechangla and spangur gap it also uh, by and large dominate by fire and observation spangur gap it means that from where the chinese came in 1962 that that area was almost with us the chinese cannot come toward 
uh, India through the Spangur Gap, India could go. So that rattled Chinese badly that the Kalas range was strategically very important to someone. People uh, say that it was uh, as uh, uh, important uh, uh, as, uh, you know, what we occupied certain very important heights in Jammu and Kashmir. So the question came uh, whether we should vacate Kalas range or not. So when we established this package, uh, that in phase one, north and south of Pangangso, and phase two, Gogra Hot Spring, and phase three, Depsang, thinking that the Chinese will abide by what they have promised, in a good faith, we withdrew from uh, Kalas range in phase one, when the Chinese went from north Pangangso, finger four to finger eight. Now, having done that, thinking now they will follow same thing in phase two and phase three, because Kalas range was a trump card and it was a levy available to us, which I rattled Chinese and Chinese were defensive. After having vocated Kalas range, their attitude changed. They start dilly dallying in phase two and phase three. So in phase two, when this Kalas, uh, when this Gogra and Hot Spring was to be vacated, they vacated from Gogra, but they have not vacated from Hot Spring. And they are not talking about Depsa. Now, this is the main issue which is coming in. India is telling that as per the comprehensive package which we agreed, and that's why on that good faith we have vacated Kalas Lane. You were to vacate now Gogra, Hot Spring, and Depsa. Let's analyze that. Uh, will they do it? And if they do it, what will be the outcome? Now, to me, it looks like that. They may agree in time to come to vacate, Kala, uh, from, uh, vacate uh, Hot Spring. But Depsang, they are unlikely to vacate so soon. The reason is Depsang is strategically very important to them, same way it is important to us. Why it is important to China? Because China feels that by coming to 1959 claim line where they have come and they are not letting our patrol points to go there, they are giving depth to their excise chain, as well as their western highway, which is going from Xinjiang to Lhasa. Also, by sitting where they are, they can directly address Nubra Valley and Siai Chen Glacier by bypassing Dolat Beg Oldi, that subsector north where we have a brigade plus strength. Third thing is, this is the only place where there can be a direct collusion which can take place between China and Pakistan. China from east from excise chain, Pakistan from west from Gilgit, Pakistan, can sandwich Nubra Valley and Saichan Glacier. And hence, it is very important to them, and they will not like to go back to where they have come. Now, as far as India is concerned, it is also very strategically important to us. After we have constructed Darbuk Shok, Dolat Peg Old Road, this subsector north, we have increased the size of the force level. We have also take, taken tanks. We have also ensured that it is very well defended and also made sure this ALT has a capability of fight all fighter aircraft. That from there, we can dominate China-Pakistan economic corridor in Gilgit, Pakistan, Karakor Highway, as well as we can dominate their Western Highway, which is going from Xinjiang to Lhasa. So therefore, the, both countries feel that this uh, you know area is strategically important to us. Having said that it is so important to China, and China feel that uh, after what some political statements were passed in India media, that we mean business, we want to take back Gilgit, Pakistan, POK, and excise chain. They were feeling it that India is doing something in subsector north, and uh, they felt that excise chain can become vulnerable. And hence they came, and they are sitting where they are in 1959 claim line, and trying to give depth to excise chain and uh, Western Highway. So therefore, it looks to me that they going back to, uh, you know, a status quo of April 2020 in Depsang is very, very difficult, uh, Frank. Absolutely. Uh, General, uh, so just to understand this a little better, you know, the uh, Darbuk Shok to DBO Road, uh, uh, you know, it, it ensures that we have direct connectivity from Shok right up till, or Darbuk right up till uh, DBO. So is that fully functional now, or are we still dependent on the airfield that we have in DBO because earlier we were only connected through air 
as a result of the airfield that we have now? Has that changed? Do we have direct connectivity as far as the road is concerned, going past the Chinese forces? Absolutely. Now, that is what uh, is the main tripping point between India and China. You see, when I was a chief of staff there, uh, we uh, were building up this road and there was a problem coming that Shok River, uh, it got flooded in uh, summer and the road came under that and thereafter we improved. A uh, new alignment was made. Darbuk Shok, Delot Bag Old Road is completely functional. Therefore, DBO is not only uh, uh, connected by uh, as far as the air connectivity is there, but also with the road connectivity and a very good road connectivity, which is uh, now uh, there 12, complete 12 months in a year. So, they, and not only that, from there we have made a number of, uh, uh, you know, tracks and roads going bang on to line of actual control. Mm -hmm. Now, that has threatened China. Now, not only that, uh, Frank, we have now made an alternative route also for Darbuk uh, DBO going from Nubra Valley through Sasarla. This is a, a glaciated uh, area, but that road is almost 80% through. We will take another about two, three years that the road which is going from Nubra Valley to Sasarla, going to Dolatmag Oldi, will be an alternative route connecting to DBO. Because it comes in the depth area, it will be not under the direct introduction of Chinese. And hence, we the importance of DBO has increased tremendously after making this road. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, since we're talking about airfields in general, the uh, Chinese PLA has built several uh, air bases very close to the line of actual control, and they are watching over our activities uh, intensively. Now, how do we counter that? How big a problem is that, do you feel? Uh, absolutely. See, uh, they, if you consider uh, the, as far as the air power is concerned, I feel that India has an edge over Chinese. The reasons are two, three, four. One is our airfields are on a lower heights and hence our aircraft can, can carry more payload in terms of weapon, ammunition and also in terms of fuel. So, they, uh, they can go to a longer distance. Now, second point is, uh, we have a aircraft which are more modern than the Chinese, which are Mirage 2000, Sukhoi 30, MKI, Jago, then um, uh, MiG-29. And with adding to a Rafale, it has now given us a slightly a punch and we are far superior than in the air power as on today in Ladakh sector. Now, to counter that, the Chinese had a problem because their all airfields were on higher uh, altitude in uh, Tibet Autonomous Region and they could carry a less payload. So, they have now done three, four things. One is they have increased the length of their existing airfields so that they can, uh, the runway size is increased so that they can carry a more payload and more, more airfields also now in a recent past not only in Ladakh, but from Ladakh to Arunachal Pradesh and made more helipad. And India also has activated the previous, uh, you know, ALG, Neoma, uh, Darbuk Chok, uh, DBO, and also we have a Leh, we have got uh, Srinagar, we have a Jammu, we have a Bareilly. So overall, India is in better position even now, but to counter this, the Chinese are fast catching by making an airfield which are having a longer uh, runway and also more uh, uh, sheltered, uh, you know, bunkers where and pan where they can keep their aircraft. But as far as the air power is concerned, I still feel we have edge because J uh, twenty the stealth aircraft with the top is not uh, time tested. It has not been seen. It is called a, a fifth generation aircraft. Uh, but whereas our Rafale, which is four or five generation aircraft, which we already almost got both the squadron, is been tested in Libya, Iraq, and Syria. It has participated and it has got a more capability, though four point five generation. So the air, uh, you know, you can say balance has tilted toward India, especially after the two squadron Rafale has come in, and we are now in a better position. But the Chinese are fast catching by making their infrastructure in a manner to counter what 
as we have as far as the air particles. Absolutely, absolutely, and that is something that we need to watch out for. Uh, you know? Yeah, yeah. In this, uh, I just want to add what they have done is the S four hundred air defense system. Which they have got it from Russia, and which is the best air defense system, which we will also get by uh, you know starting from end of this uh, year and uh, in the next two years. He has deployed that also all along the line of actual control. So imagine, uh, you know, uh, that the air defense system is slightly better. we are countering it we have also our own uh, mechanism of air defense system we have also deployed it so we have to factor this the chinese have deployed as 400 the latest air defense system which they have taken from uh, russia absolutely uh, you know general just to touch upon so the other two sectors as well you touched this uh, western sector sector uh, quite uh, elaborately now the chinese are trying to pressurize us and trying to change the status quo even in the eastern sector uh, how big a challenge is that do you think or do you feel that the eastern sector is fully secured for us uh, yeah uh, see uh, frank first of all we must understand it that ki as far as the eastern sector is concerned they consider it a south tibet is a part of uh, the southern portion of the tibet and they do not recognize arunachal pradesh as a part of india which uh, uh, it doesn't make a difference to us because we always claim that in 1914 uh, that when the treaty was signed between british india and tibetans the chinese rep was also present and it follows a well defined line called a backbone line which is on a watershed principle and if they uh, had any mm, sort of uh, dispute on this in 1962 they came down up till uh, you know plains of assam but they went back why they went back because that is not uh, arunachal pradesh is not a part of uh, china southern portion tibet it is a indian part, part two three things which are very important to them one is possibly they are putting pressure on india by raising this issue of uh, arunachal pradesh that if tomorrow there is a over or settlement on the border they are keen that excitation we should forget we should forget about the sachangaon valley and they will give some concession to us in the eastern sector so that is also a thought process which is there but no one knows exactly but as far as the eastern sector is concerned two three places where they have a lot of uh, you know importance and aim one is the tuang sector tuang sector they feel it uh, one it is the second largest uh, buddhist monastery there second it is gateway to uh, assam plain Uh, so they always feel ki that if if there is a area where uh, the chinese will be interested in tuang sector which we always feel threatened we have already fortified that second thing is that uh, you know arunachal pradesh is a uh, state of number of rivers and especially brahmaputra which is coming from china and uh, you know china can play a water uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, war with india in case it control arunachal pradesh so arunachal pradesh is important to them but possibly it is mainly a tuang sector water dispute and second thing is a counter pressure to put that if there is a settlement they are very much interested that if we accept that accession is a part of china and uh, and, uh, and also uh, the valley then uh, chakchangaon valley then they may give us some concession to what the eastern sector now this is what uh, is not officially said but it's unofficially this is on the line because the chinese have something to bargain for you whether we do this or not the time will only tell now the question come if that is there why are we not prepared to do it? you know it india being a, a, a democratic country it is not easy to take any decision by any government because if you accept accession as a part of china Uh, it is very difficult for any government of the day to accept that so therefore that that is the thing but certainly the chinese are improving their infrastructure in uh, um, just opposite to arunachal pradesh they have made line of control uh, area the roads the railway lines and the gas supply pipeline in addition to that they have made 250 to 300 villages all along the line of actual control especially toward the arunachal pradesh is those are defended locality it means they are not villages they are defended locality during the war so it means they are 
indirectly putting a lot of pressure. And also in Arunachal Pradesh, of late, they have constructed one village which possibly is in our area. So that is also there. So they are, two, three things they are doing, improving their infrastructure, making sure these villages are very close to it, also ensuring that we are put under tremendous pressure. Whenever there is something happening in Eastern Ladakh also, they are doing something in, in the in Arunachal Pradesh sector also to keep us on, on guard and to keep us on defensive. Now, in this only, I want to say, as far as uh, the central sector is concerned, it is by and large settled, but they also put pressure in Barahuti. They came, and they, though, of course, they went back. So this is where they are again putting. Now, a new chapter they have opened it is with the Bhutan, which is uh, very interesting. What has happened is, out of the 14 countries where there is a land dispute with China, they have resolved by and large their land boundary issue with 12 countries. There are only two countries which are left. One is India, one is Bhutan. Now they have signed an MOU, three-step uh, roadmap. Now what they are doing is, if you remember Doklam, where we raised this objection because they were coming in Bhutri territory, which was on our tri-junction, why it was important to us, if they come where they wanted to come, and they come to Jhamfari Ridge, they can dominate this Siliguri corridor and they can cut rest, uh, you know, uh, northeast from the rest of India. So we objected and thereafter they went back after uh, almost about more than 70 days. But now they are putting pressure on Bhutan to accept that in the where western sector, they will give some concession in their central sector of Bhutan. And they have raised another bogey by telling in, in the eastern sector, which was well settled, the Sakatang wildlife sanctuary, which is very close to Arthwan. So therefore, it looks like that they are putting tremendous pressure on Bhutan to give them a concession in Doklam area. In return, they will give something in their central sector and eastern sector. And this, we cannot accept it because if they, if they do that, then our Siliguri corridor is threatened by Chinese. And they can cut, by, uh, you know, the rest of India from the northeast uh, by coming where they want to go. So this we have to watch out. We, this we have to watch out. We have already, I'm sure our external affairs ministry must be working that this is a new development taken place just about a 10 days back. Uh, Frank. Absolutely. And finally, General, uh, what are our options really and what is the solution to this problem? Because China is going to continue to do this and China is not going to back down. What should we be doing? Uh, absolutely. First of all, uh, Frank, you asked the question earlier, which I will add in this, is that uh, the Chinese have built up almost about uh, 50 to 60,000 additional troops in, in Ladakh area, and they have built up their infrastructure also. But so is India. India has also built up, uh, you know, uh, almost about three division more. We have built up the infrastructure for them. We are in a better position because we are battle hardened. We are prepared to stay stay in this height for longer time. We have been staying in Siachen and also in Western Lata. So as far as Chinese are concerned, they are there to stay. That's what the chief army staff mentioned. They have built up their infrastructure and they are going to stay there. But considering, uh, you know, the better hardness of Indian troops, we are far better off. They, 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 after 1979, they have not fought any war. And in, in 1979, against Vietnam also, uh, against a small country, they had a bloody nose. So therefore, the Chinese are worried in, in Ladakh, there is no doubt. But they are well preparing to stay this winter. India is also well prepared. What India has done here is that we have taken the best of the weapon system available to us. That means not only the air power, we have taken M777 ultralight Hauser. Uh, a gun which we have taken from US, which is very light, which can be taken from one valley to another valley through Chinook helicopter, under Srang that. So that has uh, added a lot of flexibility of air uh, uh, by the firepower of the RT. Second thing we have taken, K-9 Vajra. That is a self-prepared gun. What is that? We we know it in, in uh, Ladakh. There are almost three to four valleys, which are 30 to 40 kilometer uh, wide. Where there will be a mechanized operation, we have already taken T-72 and T-90. So in these, starting from Dak Chok uh, and uh, then coming to Cheshul, then to Depsan, all these valleys, 
we will be employing a mechanized forces along with this K9 Vajra, which will be a self-propelled gun with a matching speed. They are on track. It is a South Korean, uh, you know, gun, which we taken it and been uh, manufactured in India by LNT. So therefore, we have deployed best of the weapon system of uh, uh, smart Pineka air power as well as uh, RT resources or mechanized uh, warfare in Ladakh, which Chinese now know it. And we are well prepared. We have made an infrastructure. So has the Chinese made it. But Chinese, we have an edge on Chinese in the sense that we are battle hardened. We can stay longer in such area. So this is the add on point which is there, which we said we have a punch there. And we have also a punch in air power. Uh, Frank. All right, General, thank you so very much for yeah. putting things into perspective for us and taking us through this so beautifully and so elaborately and making us understand the whole picture as to, you know, what exactly this is. Thank you so very much. I, uh, Frank, I just want to add about the naval power. Yes, I'm please. saying that ki, as far as the Ladakh is concerned or any uh, dispute between India and China, it's not only that it will be restricted to uh, the uh, land as well as air power, which is there, also in uh, the naval power. What happened is that ki, as far as Indo-Pacific is concerned, signing of war, a push coming, that our Indian Navy has a capability and capacity to choke a uh, Malacca state, where 70 to 80 percent of the trade goes. And Chinese have got an oil of almost about 70 days. In case a war takes place between India and China now, China knows that we can block Malacca state, which can hurt their economy. So, Navy will also play a major role. So it, the future war is not going to be only fought by, uh, by Army, Air Force. It will be fought by Army, Air Force, Navy, and jointly cyber warfare, space warfare. So we are well prepared for that. So Navy has, Indian Navy has an edge over there in Indian Ocean. However, Chinese are fast catching. They are increasing their uh, submarine. They are increasing their aircraft carrier. But Indian Navy, as on today, has an edge over Chinese PLA Navy, especially in Indian Ocean, when it comes to choking of Malacca State is concerned. Frank. Absolutely. Thank you so very much, General, for putting things into perspective and bringing all those aspects together with regards to the India-China conflict. A pleasure having you on the program. Thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. So, let me once again remind you to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and share the video as well so that more people can get to know about us. You can also subscribe to our newsletter to get some incisive information. If you like our content, please contribute to keep it alive. A small contribution that you make will be a giant leap for us to keep bringing you this content. Let me also inform you about uh, the Bharata First Knowledge Center, your one-stop destination for all your competitive exams needs. I will be starting live big picture current affairs classes after Diwali, so don't miss the chance to interact with me. We also have massive discounts for our existing packages and the offer ends in a few days. So don't miss out on this incredible new learning experience. Go to kc.bharatafas.com and register right now. Hundreds are reaping the benefits of the Knowledge Center. Don't be left behind. All this information along with some must-see recommendations are in the description of the video. Please go through it. That's it from me. See you again next time.